Welcome to Pisico Mile, David here, and today I'm exploring Snapseed, which is a free photo editing app from Google. These days, Snapseed is mostly associated with Android, but it's actually an OG in Apple's App Store because it was originally developed by Nick Software for the iPad and launched in June 2011. Now, it finished 2011 as App of the Year and it's since gone on to be downloaded over a hundred million times, receiving over one million positive ratings from users. And you guys are still requesting videos about it. And of course, I'm happy to oblige. So here I am with an exploration of Snapseed. So I'm gonna be editing a photo and I'm gonna be using a good variety of Snapseed's tools. So by the end of the video, you should have a good idea of what Snapseed all about, what it can do, and whether or not it's for you. So let's get cracking on the spiritual home of Snapseed, the iPad. So when you open Snapseed, you can see you're greeted with this extremely clean and simple interface. There's nothing to learn, nothing to set up, nothing to figure out. You're just prompted to open a photo and start editing. So I shall oblige. I'm going to choose a raw file. Um, okay. And this is a typical iPhone raw file. It needs work, but there's loads of information here for us to play with. So raw files open into this raw developer module, and I think it's a good idea to start with the end in mind, have like a vision of what you want your final edit to look like. So with this photo, I want to, I want to bring the sky back. I want to enhance those clouds. I want to make the overall exposure a lot more even. And since a lot of Snapseed's tools are known for making photos look a bit surreal, a bit hyper real, you know, I do want to play around with something like that as well. So I can tell from the histogram in the bottom left here that there's lots of information in the highlights, uh, which, you know, that's not accidental. It was shot um, that way on purpose with Halide Mark II. So I'm going to tap adjust, come to highlights and just bring the highlights down until they look like how, how I want them to look. So let's go minus 100 and I think a little bit brighter just overall plus 35 looks pretty good now I do want to increase the structure a little bit structure is like Snapseed's version of clarity which you might have uh, heard of which just adds a bit more contrast into the midtones in particular it's easy to go over the top with structure like that um, so I don't want to do that I want to keep it subtle I think plus 15, plus 16. And yeah, I think I'm happy with the white balance. So when I do go into Snapseed proper, I'm first I'm greeted by these looks. And depending on the photo, these looks can actually just complete your edit like straight away, or it can give you a really good starting point. Uh, but for me, uh, at this point, I don't want to use any of these looks. I'm just gonna go on current and then come over here to Snapseed's main tool set. And here are all the features that Snapseed is known for. You've got, you've got HDR scape, you've got the raw develop, which is what we were just in. You've got drama, tonal contrast, lens blur, vintage, all that good stuff. It's like a sweet shop of editing tools. You could have, uh, you could spend a lot of time and have a lot of fun playing around uh, with these tools. And it's, it's perfect. It's a perfect mix of tools for people who, who, who want to have fun, who want to just transform their photos and then get out without being a photo expert. And it's also got some more advanced tools like the RGB curves here in the corner. So as you progress as an editor and you learn more skills, you've got tools like the curves waiting for you for the next part of your journey. Now, usually at curves, they won't do any work for you. You have to know what you're doing and you have to make them work for you. But in Snapseed, we actually get a load of these different looks, which again, are great for people who, who are learning the curves because when you tap on one, you can actually see what the curves are doing to achieve that particular look. So I think that's great, but today I wanna go full manual. Let's um, go back to presets and just go neutral here. Now the curves are directly linked with the histogram. You can see the histogram underneath this, this line over here. Um, and if you're not familiar with the histogram, then there's a link on the screen now to help you learn about it. Now, I don't want to touch the highlights, which are on the right hand side over here. I want to start by fading the shadows. So I can do that by bringing now the shadows up. So I've added a lot of fade to this picture, but I haven't just faded the blacks and the shadows, I've faded the whole image. So what I can do is I can make a second point over here and just bring it down. 
So now my fade is just in the blacks and the shadows, but you can see that that's also affected the rest of the image as well. So I can just keep making more points. So I can make one here and just bring the line, bring the curve a bit straighter. Just like this. So now when we tap and hold on the image, we can see what we've done. Just pay attention here. So the shadows, you can see we've faded them, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So next I want to make the scenery warmer. So you can see how the clouds have like a warm red glow and I want the rest of the scene to match that. So I'm gonna to come to the red channel and since the scenery is predominantly to the left of the histogram, I'm going to make a point right here in between the shadows and the midtones, And I'm just gonna increase the reds here eventually. <laughs> So we've added some, some red into the picture. We hold on the screen again, you can see the before and the after. Now it's added it to the greens, which is what I wanted it to do, to, to the scenery, but it's also added it to the sky, which I don't want it to do so much. So I'm gonna make a new point in the highlights, because that's where the sky is, and just bring the red curve back down. So you can see if I go extreme, you can see what's happening there. So it's just affecting the sky, the grass, and the, the greenery remain largely untouched. I can keep it in a place where I want it. So I think around there. So let's uh, press before and after again. So you can see the subtle change in the color, which is just what I want. So I'm gonna confirm that, move out of the curves. And next I wanna come down to a Snapseed staple, the HDR scape. Now, HDR scape is the tool I think mainly responsible for what I used to call the Snapseed look back in the day. I said in my darkroom review about how different editing apps have different looks and styles and this sort of over the top HDR is what I used to call the Snapseed look back in the day. Um, most photos I would see edited with Snapseed had this sort of look and I was, hey, I was guilty of it too, big time. I, I used to think that this, this over the top HDR was so cool. Um, all my photos, uh, my mobile photos, pretty much look like that. Uh, but now I, I appreciate a bit more subtlety. So what I want to do is I'm gonna choose the one that's the least like offensive, not that one. I think it'll be, it's people. And I'm gonna bring the filter strength down. Let's see, 20, let's see before and after. Yeah, and that's just giving us some nice extra texture, extra texture to the scenery here. So I'm going to come back into the tools and I want to complement, I want to just build slightly on that extra texture with, uh, with tonal contrast. I don't want some tonal contrast in the high tones, that's a sky. So I'm going to bring that down to zero. Let's put the Apple Pencil down there. So I'm, I'm going to bring that down to zero and I don't want so much in the lows which is like this area of the shadows and things. And mainly in the mid-tones, but not that much. So again, very subtle. Just pay attention to the contrast there in the mid-tones. A little bit more pop, which is good. So I can confirm that. Finally, I'm gonna add a, a vintage look, another Snapseed staple. So I'll go on vintage and Let's have a look at some of these looks here. That's quite a nice one, number eight. But I think I'll want the neutral colors. So I'll go for number 12, but it is a bit dark. So I'll bring the brightness up quite a fair bit. Just bring it back down a bit. And I think I'll just bring the overall filter strength just down a touch to 10. And there's a bit too much of a vignette on it, which is the darkening of the corners. So I'll bring that down. There we go. So just drawing a bit more attention to the tree there in the middle, and I can confirm that. Now something I could have done in the vintage filter was added this, this lens, this edge blur. Can you see how the edges are blurred in the corners here? Uh, but I don't want to do that in vintage. I want to do that in the dedicated lens blur tool, just because I have a bit more control. So I want to put it mainly around the tree and it is quite a strong effect. So I'm going to bring it down. I 
And this is going to help me achieve that that surreal, that hyper real look that I was talking about before. And you know what? I'm actually, you know what? Maybe I'll bring it up again. Mm. I think that looks pretty good. But you know what? If I do decide later that I don't want this much blur, I can change it, which I will show you how to do in just a moment. Uh, before I do that, though, I will just straighten it a bit. There we go. And then add some sharpening, which is detail and sharpening. Not too much. OK, cool. Now, one of the best thing about Snapseed is stacks. Stacks is like a combination of your history and your layers. And for a mobile app in particular, it's a really powerful feature, especially for those who want to take their photo editing to the next level. So I'm going to tap up here in the top right corner and I'm going to tap on View Edits. In Stacks, we can see all of the edits that we've made. So if we want to go back to a certain point in time, we can delete a tool, we can modify it, we can change it, and we can even add a new tool anywhere in the stack. So let's say I decide that, you know what, I do want to go way over the top with that HDR. You can tap this little arrow here, tap the adjustments icon, then you can just bring the, the filter way up, confirm it, and then come back forward in time and you've changed your photo. But obviously I don't want that. So I can, I could discard the edits if I wanted to, but I will go back in just to show you again and just bring it back down. What was it at? Was it at 25? 20. <laughs> That's fine. So let's go back here forwards again. And there we go, back to where we were. Next, there's the Stacks brush. Before I get to that, I want to quickly mention that the SQL Mal now has a Facebook page where I'll be posting more content and a group page as well, where you can post your photos, you can get feedback on them, you can ask questions, share your ideas and discuss photography. So let's get back into the Stacks view with the Stacks brush. So the Stacks brush allows you to apply a tool to only a certain part of the photo. And to give you the best example of what that looks like, I'm going to come out of the Stacks view. I'm going to add a brand new tool. I want one that's really over the top to give you the best example. So I'm going to add a drama tool. I think I'm going to go dark drama and uh, confirm that. Then I'm going to come back into the Stacks view. And let's just say I just want my sky to be very dramatic. So I can tap the arrow, come into the Stacks brush, and you can see it looks like my edit has disappeared, but it's not, it's just been masked out by Snapseed and we can reveal the mask. So what we can do is we can just start drawing and Snapseed is telling us where we're drawing, but we can turn it off to see the actual effect just by tapping mask down here. So now we can paint in just in the sky you know, and this I, I know this looks completely horrible but this is just giving you an example of what you can do with the stacks brush if you wanted to go the other way you could tap invert and now it's only applied to the bits that I've not drawn on and we can change the size of the brush by zooming in you can see the reticle is changing size there so we can get in here and we can zoom out to make it bigger So that is the Stacks Brush. I think it's a really cool, really powerful tool in this free app. This is a free photo editing app. And of course, I don't want that drama effect. So I can remove it. But let's say that I want my drama effect after HDRscape. I can come back to HDRscape, go back into the looks, add my drama effect, confirm that. And then I can come back into the Stacks view and then come forward. So now the drama tool has been added to the middle of my stack, but of course I don't want it there. <laughs> I really don't want it there. So I can delete it and balance is restored. So I'm quite happy with that edit. Let's see a before and after. That's where we started and that's how it's going. So I think that looks pretty good. So I like the edits that I've made here and I want to save them so I can instantly apply them to a photo in the future. So you can do that. I believe this, this bit might be a bit different depending on which device you have. But on the iPad here and on my iPhone as well, you go into looks and you can scroll down here and press the plus. And now you can save your look, name it whatever you want. And then you can just come in and apply it in the future to a different photo. 
And if you're feeling generous, you can actually share your look with a friend using this, this QR look down here. So you can tap QR look, tap create QR look. It's going to create a QR code. So I'm going to bring in my iPhone 12 Pro. I've got Snapseed opened on it with a very similar picture to this one. And I think this look will be perfect for this photo. So when we scan the QR code, apply QR look, yes please. So this look I've just scanned doesn't work perfectly on the iPhone. Uh, it's too much fade in the shadows. So what I can do, come into my stack. My stacks have of course been brought over to the iPhone. I can tap on curves, come into the RGB channel and just bring that fade down. A bit dark so I can bring the shadows up with this point here. I think I'll apply that, come back to the future and there you go. Instantly made it a lot better. Pretty cool, huh? So after using Snapseed for a while, it is clear to me why it's been so popular these last 10 years. It's really hard to believe that this thing is free. And I think it's a fantastic tool for a wide variety of people with different needs. It's great for those who want to just quickly and instantly transform their photos with a look or a filter. And at the same time, it's also a marvelous tool for those who want to take their photography further and start properly learning photo editing. So you can start by just applying some looks and then maybe over time you start editing those looks and then adding another filter filter on top of the look and ed editing that. And eventually you're shooting in RAW and using the RGB curves and even looking around at other apps with even more powerful tools with some file management. So what do you think? Let me know if you liked this exploration style of video and if you've used Snapseed. Have you used it in the past? Do you currently use it? And if so, who are you? What sort of photography do you do? And what level are you at? I'm really keen to find out like, who my audience are and what sort of content would give them the best value. But if you've made it to this point in the video, then I already know that you're a legend. So <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Take care.